In today's video, we are going to be talking all about breeding fish for profit. And in specific, we're going to be talking about how to breed fish for profit with a single tank. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So breeding fish for profit isn't one of the easiest things to do in this hobby. And I think a lot of my videos on YouTube and definitely other people's videos on YouTube have intrigued people on how to actually do this. As you can see behind me, I do have quite an extensive fish room with tons of different species of fish and I do breed fish for a living. I'm only 21 years old, I don't make like a million bucks a year out of this, but I definitely do make a little bit of money from this and my YouTube does help that quite a bit, but nonetheless you can still make money breeding fish. Now, I get this question heaps and this is where I started with breeding fish for profit and that's how do you make money breeding fish from the start, like as a beginner. Now before I get into any of these fish on this list, I just want to say that you're not going to make a lot of money doing these methods because these aren't the most efficient ways of breeding fish and the way I describe all of these different combinations for breeding fish is kind of just, you know, additional income, maybe enough to buy you an extra tank every year or maybe to just pay for the food for the fish and give you a little bit of pocket money to buy a couple of extras. By no means do I think you're going to be able to make a living or retire off of breeding fish, especially this method. Breeding fish with a single tank is very, very limiting and you can't really do a lot with a single tank in regards to breeding. So a lot of these fish are going to be very easy beginner fish and kind of the combinations that I would use to make a little bit of money. All of the fish I'm about to talk about are going to be for 20 gallon tanks, so a 20 gallon breeding for profit setup. So what can you expect to make from these? I'd say if you do it properly, maybe about 100 to 200 bucks a month if you're lucky. You could sometimes make more, especially if you have some grow out tanks so you can grow out some of these fish, but I'd say about 100 to 200 bucks a month, which would be actually quite a bit if this was just your hobby. So the way you're going to want to set up a breeding for profit tank is by layering different species on top of each other in the most compatible way to kind of maximize the amount of income sources you can get from that tank. So this sounds so over the top, but what I mean is picking maybe like a live bearer and then something like a shrimp and then something like a snail and a plant and using all of those four in combination to create a tank that works together as an ecosystem that you can also constantly pull fish from for profit. I'm not going to really talk about selling the fish. You'll have to figure that out. Maybe you can make an arrangement with a local store, but you can figure that out yourself. The first arrangement I'm going to talk about is endlers. So endlers can be a great fish to breed for profit because firstly, they're really easy. When these guys breed, the way they breed is they're basically a guppy. They're a live bearer. What will happen is you put males and females together. In about 21 days, you'll actually have the females start dropping fry. So the females will get pregnant, raise those fry inside of their body, and instead of laying eggs, they'll just release the fry as live little babies. So it's really easy, you don't have to hatch any eggs, and the fish take care of the whole breeding process themselves. The best thing about them is, firstly, they're not really super inbred, so a lot of the time you're going to have really good genetic stock, it means you're not going to have bent spines and things like that. They're just really hardy. The other thing too is they're really good for a lot of people's tap water, so if you have just like a neutral tap water with a little bit of hardness in it, they're going to go really well in there. The best thing about endlers is because they're small, a lot of the time they can't actually eat their fry. So what will happen with a lot of live bearers is if they're in an aquarium that's very small and they're hungry, they might give birth and then they just turn around and eat all their babies. So endlers don't really do this as much because they're smaller fish than guppies and other types of live bearers. So I haven't found this to be an issue. Another good thing about this combo, this is probably the best combo, endlers go pretty well with shrimp. Shrimp are going to be our second source of income in this tank. So what I'd recommend is doing your own research, there's a bunch of different types of shrimp, but I'd recommend Nero Caradinas. Yellow cherries, red cherries, or blue dream shrimp would be my ideal picks. Pick one of those species and go with it with your endlers. Endlers will eat baby shrimp, so you're going to have to have a lot of hiding spots in your tank, but some of the shrimp will survive and you'll see quite a big growth in the population of shrimp. You would have definitely more shrimp being bred if you didn't have any endlers in there. And the third income source is going to be from snails. So some of the species I'd recommend are mystery snails, or ramshorn snails and with these two I'd pick a certain colour type. So mystery snails sell pretty well anyways, they're going to lay their eggs outside of the aquarium and that's a whole different process but those could be a really good option or ramshorn snails in my opinion might be better. I'd try and find like a really good red ramshorn snail or a blue ramshorn snail and you can sell these guys pretty easily as well like in packs of 10 on eBay and I've seen people get like 50 bucks for 10 ramshorn snails. And then a fourth additional income source is like you heard me talking about before, you're going to need some kind of hiding spaces for all of these guys because you're going to have baby guppies everywhere, you're going to have baby shrimp everywhere and you want to hide those guys from the parents. So adult shrimp aren't going to eat anything. It's just the guppies you're going to want to hide everything from. You want some kind of cover, so the best thing I'd recommend is Java moss. 
Java Moss can be a great little source of income for a tank. It doesn't grow really, really rapidly, but you can sell bundles of it on eBay for like five bucks each. And if you grow a lot of it, like within six months, you can have quite a big amount of Java Moss in a tank. You can just sell a couple of little bundles out of there and make a bit of extra income. So that's my first ideal breeding for profit kind of tank. Okay, so the second 20 gallon like breeding for profit setup that I would do is just basically the same as before. Snails, shrimp, Java Moss, and I'll just remove the endlers. So this way you're going to have more shrimp being produced and you're going to have definitely more snails. This might be a little bit better for you because it doesn't really give you the diversity of all those different species to be able to sell, but you're going to have a mountain of shrimp. Recently I had this blue dream tank going for quite a long time. I've actually pulled pretty much all the shrimp out of it at this point, but I started off with about 10 shrimp and I bred hundreds of shrimp, like so many. And I was pulling at least 30 to 40 of them a week and I was selling them for three to four bucks each. So that can give you quite a decent amount of income just breeding shrimp and you could also sell some blue snails out of there or something like that. So we're now onto the third one. And for this list, we're gonna go with a new type of live bearer. So we're gonna go with the guppies. And for this specific setup, I'd recommend having guppies, snails and java moss. I wouldn't recommend having shrimp with big guppies because unless you have like a mountain of hiding spaces, it can work, like it definitely can work and you can try this just if you want to. There's no like reason you can't do it. The shrimp aren't gonna affect the guppy population, but the guppies can kind of eat bigger shrimp. So you're not gonna have as much breeding from the shrimp and obviously it might not be worth doing the shrimp, but you're gonna have a ton of guppies being produced, the same as the endless as before. And you're gonna have a ton of java moss as well. By the way, you don't have to do just Java Moss, you could do like Wisteria or something like that, but Java Moss seems to sell really well and it's really easy to ship. The combination of those three, so Java Moss, Guppies and Snails, in my opinion would work really well. And then my fourth combination is going to be the same as the last one I was just talking about, but instead of doing Guppies, we're going to do Platties. So I haven't really talked about Platties much on the channel, but when I set up my first aquarium, I had Guppies, Platties, Snails all together in the same tank and it worked out really well. So you guys could do the exact same. You can do just plain platies by themselves, or you could do some guppies and platies together, and they breed really well together. If you're gonna to wanna to do these breeding setups, you're gonna need like a ton of cover and a ton of hiding spaces, but I've used these methods before and they've worked out okay in the past. So that could be another little way of doing this in a 20 gallon tank. Now, before I wrap this video up, I wanna talk about another way of maximizing income, and that's making a bigger tank. So. You don't have to do this in just a 20 gallon tank. Like a 20 gallon tank is probably the ideal. I wouldn't recommend doing this in a 10 gallon. It's just a little bit too small, but a 20 gallon works all right. You can also do all of these options in a 55 gallon and basically double your results because you can have heaps more space for fish to be in, to hide from predators and to breed in. And it works out really well. Another thing you can do with a 55 gallon tank compared to a two foot tank, like a 20 gallon, is you can add bristle nose to it. So you can get an adult pair of bristle nose, just your common, throw them in there with a breeding log and they're gonna breed every 30 days, they're gonna probably have about 100 babies. You can pull out those 100 babies as they grow up in the tank and sell those as well. So you could have like, you know, in the same tank, endlers, shrimp, ramson snails and bristle nose and you've got four different types of fish coming out of the one tank. And like I said before, it's finding your own balance with all of these fish, but I just wanted to open you guys up to those ideas. You're probably all wondering what would I recommend? In my opinion, I think most people are gonna make the most money with shrimp tanks. Depending on what type of shrimp you have, you're not gonna make as much money with like a common red shrimp, but if you can find like some really cool snowball shrimp or some blue shrimp or even black shrimp and just breed those with some java moss and some snails, that's probably gonna be the best turnover. And keep in mind, once you do start harvesting shrimp, they stop breeding as well, so you might need to reset the tank up every like year and just do the whole process again. So you might have like six months of really good profits and then six months of breeding and that's how it might work. But like I said, if you're serious on doing this, you're gonna to need to set up a bunch of grow out tanks and it's not hard to do, but breeding out of one tank is almost like impossible. So yeah, I just wanted to answer this question because I've gotten it so, so much. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned a thing or two. I don't feel like I gave you a lot, which makes me feel a little bit bad, but hopefully you guys have got some ideas from this video and I'll see you in the next one.